Hello everyone, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a mountain in Blender. Now making a mountain is fairly simple, almost as simple as 87% of you guys hitting the subscribe button that are currently not subscribed. But apart from that, making mountains in Blender are very simple. Uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to do it today in about 10 minutes. Um, so, how do we get started? So the first thing we're going to need to do is have our landscape. Now we could go through the trouble of getting displacement maps, modeling our own landscape, and doing all that, but we're not going to do that. Uh, Blender has a built-in add-on called the ANT Landscape add-on. So we're going to go ahead and install that add-on. It comes with Blender. It's not really installing it. It's just enabling it. All we have to do is go up to the top left under Edit, Preferences, Add-ons. Just type in Landscape or Land and then Add Mesh ANT Landscape. Make sure this is checked and then click Save Preferences. Also while we're here, we're going to go ahead and enable the Node Wrangler add-on. So just type in Node and you'll find Node Wrangler. Just select that and then click Save Preferences. So now with uh, the ANT landscape add-on, all we have to do is hit Shift A, and under Mesh, you'll notice we have a new landscape tab. So for simplicity purposes, we're going to be using the default landscape, uh, which is this. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale it up until we have something like this. Now if we take a look at this landscape, uh, we can notice it has a lot of jagged edges, and if we take a look in edit mode by hitting Tab, we can see that's because it doesn't have a lot of geometry. So how do we fix that? Well, we're going to go to our Modifiers tab, uh, which is this little wrench icon over on the right. Go to Add Modifier and Subdivision Surface. We're going to go ahead and give this two subdivisions on both the viewport and render, and then click this little arrow right here and click Apply, or you can hit Control A. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go get our textures. So for the textures I'm using in this tutorial, they're from cc0textures.com, which is a free texture resource website. I'm going to be using Rock 031 and Snow 004. I'm going to be using the 4K versions of them. I already have them downloaded, but obviously you'll need to download them. Uh, so just you can go all the way up to 8K if your computer can handle it, or 2K if your computer can't handle 4K, and so on, so on. You'll need both of these textures because those are the textures we're going to be using for the mountain. Uh, so uh, how do we get started? How do we actually texture our mountain? So, uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go over here under the Blender logo at the far top left. Click uh, when your cursor turns into a crosshair. Click and then just drag. You can drag this X window for as big or small as you want. I recommend giving you a lot of space so you can work in it. And then we're going to go up to this little ball and grid and then go to Shader Editor. So you can go ahead and in this window click N to close this window to give you a lot more space. And then we're going to go to the top and click New. So once we click new, we can see that we have our principal BSDF. And this is the basic uh, shader that Blender gives all new materials. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to my render settings, which is a little camera. It's the first tab on the left or on the right. Uh, switch my render engine to cycles and then device to my GPU if you're rendering on a GPU. So how do we get started with uh, texturing? So texturing is pretty simple since we enabled that Node Wrangler add-on. Node Wrangler just basically works, makes working with texture nodes and just nodes in general a lot easier. So uh, we, we're using a PBR texture. Um, this basically has roughness maps, uh, normal maps, roughness maps, displacement maps, stuff like that. I probably said more, one of those two times. I can't remember. <laughs> but um, a really cool shortcut to get a PBR texture set up already in Blender is clicking on your node, uh, your shader node, and hitting Control Shift and T. Uh, this will bring up a principal texture setup. You can see down here this little blue button. Go to wherever you have your rock texture added, and we're just going to shift click all of the rock textures, and then click principal texture setup. And you can see now we have uh, we have our mapping nodes. We have all four of our texture maps. We have our normal map and our displacement map. I'm gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna go ahead and delete the displacement map because we're not gonna use this for this tutorial. Um, and next, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and set up the little setup that makes Blender that tells Blender where the snow should be. So the way we're gonna do that is in our shader tab. If we hit Shift A and then type in geometry and just add in a geometry node, you can see this geometry node has a lot of things. Uh, the only thing we're gonna be worried about today, though, is the pointiness. Um, the pointiness value, value, that's the word I'm looking for is value. The pointiness value. Uh, we're just going to use that one today. So with the help of a uh, color ramp, we are going to basically be using this pointiness value to tell Blender, hey, these pointy, these pointy parts on our mesh, put snow there. And these dips in our mesh, don't put snow there. 
and that that's pretty cool. Uh, it's a really easy way to make mountains. You could also use it with a ton of other stuff if you're just trying to mix textures. But we're using it for a mountain because that's what this tutorial is. So I'm going to go ahead and shift A and then add a color ramp. Color ramp. And then just put the pointiness into the fact of the color ramp. So you can see if we hit control shift and click on the color ramp, we can view the color ramp in our render view. And initially it'll be all white. And you can see that here right now it's all white pretty much. But if we crush these blacks and whites by uh, bringing these black flags and white flags over to the middle, you can see that we are now, uh, this is looking a lot better. So you can see at the pointy parts, any part that's kind of risen up, we can see that it is white and the parts that are um, dipped in are black. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to be telling Blender to use this all these white parts for snow and these black parts as our um, as our rock. Uh, so you can obviously switch this by what we're going to do in a second. But to go back to your regular rendered view, we can hit Control Shift and click on the principal BSDF. And one thing you'll know when you click on the principal BSDF is our texture isn't even showing up. What's up with that? Why isn't it showing up? You can see that we have the base color of our texture, but there's no detail or anything in it. So the reason for that is because we haven't UV unwrapped our texture yet, or our mesh yet. And what UV unwrapping is, in basic terms, is taking your mesh, completely flattening it out. So imagine you just have, let's say you have a 3D representation of your mesh on your desk in front of you right now. And you just flattened it out. Just completely flattened it out until it's just a piece of paper. And on those paper, on that piece, piece of paper, every single uh, face that your mesh has is on there. And then you just tape another image over it, or you just put uh, the mesh over another image. That's basically what UV unwrapping is. Uh, so how do we UV unwrap? Well, if you have a model that needs to look good and uh, has a lot of texture detail, you can go through the process of mar marking seams, doing a bunch of stuff like that, but we're not going to do that. We're gonna do is we're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, and uh, once we go into edit mode, we can see that uh, we can see all of our faces in it. I'm gonna go ahead and go out of edit or out of render mode just so it speeds up my computer a little bit. But you can basically see that we have all these faces that are going to be mapped to a part of a texture. So to actually unwrap the mesh, we're gonna hit U and then Smart UV Project, and then just click OK. Now this might take a little bit depending on um, how many vertices and how many faces your mesh has. It could take anywhere from a few seconds to up to a minute or so. Uh, but it should take less than a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and cut the video anyway just so it speeds up the process. So our mesh is now unwrapped. That took a little bit less than a minute. And if we tab out of edit mode by hitting the tab button. And then we go back into our render view, you'll be able to see that we now have our rock texture on it. So right now, uh, the rock texture is way too big for our mesh. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to where we changed it to the shader editor at the beginning of the video. And then just click UV editor. It's right under the Blender logo. Just click this little button and change it to UV editor. So if we go to, if we hit tab again to go back into edit mode, uh, we'll be able to see once everything starts responding again that we now have different parts of our mesh mapped to um, these parts. So this is what Smart UV Project did. It basically used uh, different islands of our mesh and then put them on the texture. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, uh, hit A to select all and I'm going to hit S and I'm going to hit 5 and then enter. And so what that'll do is that'll scale our mesh up by 5. It might freeze for a second just because there's a lot of geometry. But you can see now our mesh is scaled up by about 5. So if we tab back out of edit mode and we're just in render view now, you can see that our texture looks a lot better with the scale of the mountain. Now, how do we add the actual snow to our mountain? So if we go back into shader editor, we click our principal BSDF and then we hit shift D and just bring it down here somewhere. Click on it and click control shift T just like we did the first time. And then just go to wherever your snow texture is and then just basically repeat the process of texturing the first time. Just go wherever your snow is and then select all of them by shift clicking and then principal texture setup. And we can go ahead and remove our displacement if we want. 
um, and then what we're going to do is mix these two principles together, our shader groups together. So the way we're going to do that is Shift A and add a mix shader. Put our mix shader in the middle of the first principle in the material outputs, and then we're going to put the uh, BSDF output into the bottom shader of our mix shader. So immediately you'll see that our snow is covering our entire scene. You can verify this is the snow texture by just zooming in and seeing it's the snow texture. It's not just white, empty texture. So uh, how do we actually get? Uh, how do we actually use this to get bl to tell Blender where the snow should be? So that's fairly easy. We just take the color output of the color ramp and then put it in the fact of our mix shader. And so you can instantly pretty much see that we have the rock where the snow isn't and the snow where the rock isn't. So you can uh, always adjust this a little bit. Um, you could like bring this back more if you want more snow. You could bring it forward no more if you want less snow. Just stuff like that. Uh, doing something like that. Um, you could put this more if you want like bigger, deeper snow or like thicker snow. But I'm gonna pull these back a little bit, and I'm gonna put pull this one. Do whatever you want with this. Um, you could do a lot more things with this. Um, but now what we're gonna do is go ahead and set up lighting. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this point light that's default in the scene, and just delete it. And then uh, go to our world settings, which is this little globe. Click on the color right here, the yellow dot color, and then just click on sky texture. And then this will give us. Uh, this pretty cool looking sky texture, pretty cool looking mountain, and then from here you can adjust your settings a little bit more if you want. Just do something like this, maybe pull the blacks up a little bit more. Just something like that. And then what you can do to set up your camera is just hit Control alt and zero and you have your camera angle set up you can click your camera hit G move it somewhere and then go to your camera settings down here and then just change the focal length to something that you like and so yeah that's basically how you create a mountain in blender um, in about 10 15 minutes uh, hopefully you guys enjoy hopefully you guys learn something um, as always my name is Michael from Polygon Island and I'll see you guys next time bye